In this tutorial video, I'll be showing how to install NoTrack. Now, NoTrack is a program that I've written to do a network wide blocking of trackers. Now, ideally, the way to use NoTrack is on another device, something like a Raspberry Pi. That's nice and simple and low powered. Now, I've tested it on a Model B1, it's a little bit slow on doing a stats page, but in terms of functionality on the DNS, it's perfectly fine for a network of had about four computers running on it at once, and it was no lag at all. Now it works a little bit better on the Raspberry Pi B Model 2s. Actually, it works a lot better on the stats. It's quite considerably faster. Now you could use it on a desktop computer on the system you're using, but it's not really the way it's been designed for. I suppose don't see why it couldn't work that way. Or you could install it on any other lightweight server. So what you'll need is the install file. In fact, we just need the link to it. So I'm going across to my GitHub page and need install.sh. So there'll be a note of all this in the description below and a copy to the links that you need. So let's just get raw file. Yep, yeah, that's what I need. So let's take a copy of that link. So I'm utilizing an Ubuntu server 1510 running in VirtualBox for this demonstration. If you're going to use it on a Raspberry Pi, I'd recommend Raspbian Jesse Lite. There's no need for the full blown desktop. So I've SSH'd into the server and set a static IP address. Check out my previous video on how to set a static IP address. So I'll clear the screen as Control L is the shortcut there. Now let's download a copy of that install script. So that's wget and then paste the link. Now to install it. So that's bash install.sh. So welcome to NoTrack at version 0 0.4. Bit of an introduction there. Okay. NoTrack is a server, therefore it needs a static IP address to function properly. Now at this point you've got the opportunity to abort, so you can scroll across to abort or just carry on. I would recommend you set the static IP address first before you install, but there's no reason why you can't just come back and do it later. So select the IP version being used. Default, you're probably IPv4. Some people are lucky enough to have IPv6, in which case, yep, use the arrow keys, scroll down, press space. I'm on IPv4, so tap across to select, and press enter. So the job of a DNS server is to translate a human readable domain names, for example google.com, into an IP address which your computer understands, e.g. something like that. So by default your router forwards DNS queries to your internet service provider, however the ISP DNS servers are not the best. So I've given you the opportunity to select from this list here. Now, a couple of these DNS servers on this list have IPv6 addresses, now if you choose IPv6 earlier, the IPv6 address will be used. I'm quite happy with OpenDNS. So yep, yeah, go on with that, so select. This is it, the install will carry on. So preparing to install dev packages, need to put my sudo password. Now so far, no track is compatible with Debian and Ubuntu based distros. I've just written the package installer for Arch based distros. It's untested at the moment, but I think it should be the same. So just got to wait a few minutes for these installs to happen. A DNS mask is the DNS server being used, and Lite, TPD, and PHP are the web server. Now it's using PHP 5 on Debian based distros, but on Arch, I opted to use the PHP 7. And that's it, no track has been installed. Now, if all being well, you'll see in the process tracker list, and that will have completed. Now looking back, there's this line here which mentions about filling out local hosts file. This will be something I'll show you more in another video. This is if you're going to use DHCP within DNS Mask. It's actually really handy because you can set up static IP addresses for your whole network this way. So at this point you could go and test out the web server and just pop in the IP address of it and you'll see absolutely nothing. But in fact, actually there is something there. Just type in forward slash admin and you'll get the admin page and get a bit of an idea about some of these stats here. So the tracker block list and top level domain block lists have loaded. There's been no DNS queries yet. Now on your other devices, you need to go and change the DNS server. Now, this will vary depending on the desktop, depending on the device, but within Kubuntu, within KDE desktop, I just go across to the network manager. So that's, I'm using a wired connection on IPv4. I'm going to use DNS server this is 192.168.62.247. Let's OK that. Uh, disconnect. 
and I'll reconnect. Let's start with something simple first, so ping google.com. So that's come back with an address and showing that I'm using BT internet for my ISP, <laughs> thanks. Now to ping something that's blocked, so any.xyz. Now that's come back with the IP address of no track. Okay, well that covers most of the basic setup there. If it comes back with anything different, then you need to go back and make sure your DNS settings are right here on the device. Now we'll go through some of the other features on NoTrack. Let's go into the NoTrack folder, which by default is on your home folder. You see I've got this program here called Create SSL Cert. So let's run it. So bash create SSL cert.sh. So there you go, this installer will create an SSL certificate on your NoTrack web server Lite TPD. Okay. So there's some details you'll need to enter, and I've provided you some examples of what you'll need to put in. And there's a link here to the two letter country codes. So press any key to continue. Okay. So generating 2048 bit RSA private key. Now, two letter country name, Great Britain. We don't have states here in the UK, so dot is blank. Locality, Cardiff for me. Organization name, yeah, quids up. Unit, yeah, IT, common name. So this is the fully qualified domain name of your device. It'd be listed up there. Um, that's not actually fully qualified, is it? But but close enough for this demo. So that's not a real email address. So your SSL certificate has been installed and Lights TPD has successfully restarted. That's an old leftover note there. I was trying to change the certificates to get a P12 certificate that could be imported into Chrome. Anyway, let's test it out. HTTPS. This connection is untrusted. Yes, it is. It's a private certificate. There's not much you can do about that unless you want to get a proper certificate that's signed correctly. So anyway, I understand the risks. Add exception. I'm not going to permanently store this one. So yeah, confirm. So there you go. There's HTTPS working on no track. And this works with a blank page as well. Now to go across to the etc slash no track folder. If you have a look here, you've got some blacklist and whitelist files. So you've got blacklist and domain blacklist. Let's go across to the blacklist first. You can open it with your favourite text editor, so I'm doing sudo nano blacklist.txt. So use this file to add additional websites to be blocked. And run the no track script, sudo no track, after you make any changes to this file. You can literally just type in the name of the website. So let's type my own in here. Yep, I'm gonna block it. So control X, Y, enter, yes. Let's have a look at the domain blacklist as well. Pseudo nano domain hyphen blacklist. So I've split this up into various categories, depending on whether they're risky or low risk. I'm sorry if your country is listed here. It's nothing personal, it's just this is what I have found looking across the internet and my own experience with malicious sites that there are on these domains. So let's go and block yeah, the European Union. So control X, then Y, enter. Now I need to update no track. So just run sudo no track. So if I try and ping quidsup.net, you'll see it's redirected to the NoTrack device. Same if I try and ping anything on the EU domain, it's redirected. Now let's say I've got something on these block lists and you actually want to unblock it. So sudo nano whitelist.txt. So what I'm going to do is put back my website. The whitelist overrides anything in the blacklist. So that's control X, Y, so now to make the updates take effect. So type in sudo no track. And it's a bit of a deliberate mistake because this completed rather quickly and didn't import anything in the blacklist. 
because I blocked my website and prevented the file from being downloaded. Oops. Yeah, it's relieved now. That's it. That was a look at how to install NoTrack. So thanks for watching. I'll see you all later.